Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the University of North Carolina at Pembroke on this beautiful morning. I am Chancellor Allen Meadors. Please stand as the Pembroke Chamber singers lead us in the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation by Reverend Ron Brown. Pause me, please. We pause these brief moments to acknowledge, or at least recognize, that there is one greater than ourselves, and for it is you, O God, however we may conceive you, which has molded us from the dust of this earth and has delivered us from our mother's womb. For this gift of life which we did not ask, we give you thanks. And it is for this day, days like these, that we celebrate the accomplishments of our sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, and our students and our friends. We sense the continued support of so many around us as we go through this journey of life together. So we give thanks this day to all those who have nurtured, tutored, challenged, and loved us. Amen. You may be seated as the Pembroke Chamber Singers sang the UNCP alma mater. Thank you, Dr. Gary Wright and the Pembroke Chamber Singers, Dr. Tim Altman and the University Band, and Reverend Sanders. Seated behind me are the UNCP Board of Trustees, Executive Staff, and Deans. Our honored faculty is seated in the audience to the right. The University of North Carolina Pembroke's successes are due in a great part to the ex extraordinary contributions of our dedicated trustee members. I wish to recognize the UNCP Board of Trustees and ask them to please stand. Thank you for your outstanding service.
to the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. It is also my privilege to introduce the Grand Marshal of today's ceremony, Dr. Robert W. Brown. Dr. Brown is a professor of the Department of History. He is a U he, he is UNC Pembroke recipient of the coveted UNC Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Brown on this significant accomplishment. Seated next to Dr. Brown is Mr. Marco Gospalovich, President of the Student Government Association. Dr. Kay McClanahan, Chair of the General Faculty. Mr. James Bass, Director of Alumni Relations. Mr. Ron Sanders, Campus Minister. On my left, our University of North Carolina President Emeritus, Molly Corbett Broad. <laughs> Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs of the University of North Carolina System, Dr. Michelle Howard Vartel. <laughs> Mr. Carl Mears, Chairman of the UNC Board of Trustees. <laughs> Dr. Charles Herring and Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs and Professor James F. Herbert. At this time, I will ask Dr. Michelle Howard Vital to step forward and present greetings on behalf of the UNC Office of the President and the Board of Governors. Without further introductions, Mr. Mears, Dr. McClanahan, Mr. Gospasevich, and Mr. Bass will follow her. Dr. Howard Vital. Good morning. What a beautiful morning. Chairman Mears, Board of Trustees, Chancellor Metters, faculty, administration, distinguished guests, and members of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke community, and of course, the class of 2006. <laughs> I am so honored to bring greetings to you from Chairman Brad Wilson, the entire Board of Governors, President Erskine Bowles, the General Administration of the University of North Carolina. Standing here, I can feel the excitement, the sense of accomplishment, and the pride of the community of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. We celebrate your new beginnings with you. The opportunity to participate in this commencement and to be a member of such a distinguished platform is so personally rewarding. And this platform party includes one of my personal role models, Molly Corbett Broad, President Emerita of the University. Graduates, please accept my most sincere congratulations as you celebrate a most significant accomplishment. Your degree represents hard work and dedication to a most worthy goal. Graduates, even though this day is focused on you, please acknowledge the contributions of the faculty and the staff of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. As you celebrate, applaud those who supported you through your successes and challenges. Recently, the Princeton Review rated UNCP as a best college value. Were you surprised at that? I didn't think so. Ultimately, graduates, whatever your plans, you, each one of you, you, are our future. Be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you. <laughs> Chancellor Meadows, President Meredith Broad, distinguished platform party, faculty, graduates, family and friends of our graduates. It is great pleasure that I bring greetings and congratulations to the class of 2006 on behalf of the Board of Trustees 
and to join UNC Pembroke's friends, alumni, and families, especially the parents of our graduates, as we celebrate their great success in completing their degrees. Graduation Day is an occasion to recall the memories made and experiences you have had at UNC Pembroke during the past few years to celebrate with pride and joy the conferring of your hard-earned degree, and most importantly, to embrace the future with the confidence that only comes from receiving an outstanding education. You leave UNC Pembroke today as a respected alumnus from the fastest growing institution within the UNC system. As UNCP alumni, it is your responsibility to use the knowledge and training you received here to improve the lives of others throughout the rest of your life. As you move into this next stage of your life, continue to challenge yourself, and most importantly, enjoy what you do and do it well. Once again, congratulations and best of luck in your future endeavors. Is this gorgeous day an omen for your bright future or what? It is a great pleasure to bring greetings from the faculty this morning. To our special guests, our trustees and administrators, to the alumni, to the parents and friends of our graduates, and most importantly, to our spring 2006 graduates. You are the reason we are here and you make us very proud. We are proud of you and what you have accomplished during your time at UNCP, of how you have grown intellectually, emotionally, and socially. And we're also proud of the role that we have played in helping you to get to this very exciting point in your lives. It has been our responsibility and our privilege to share our lives with you. The most important thing that we have done during your time here is to have challenged you, challenged you to work harder than you realized you could, and often harder than you wanted to, challenged you to look beyond your own concerns and appreciate the concerns of others, challenged you not to simply accept ideas, even those we presented to you, but to think critically about them and to make your own informed judgments. We have challenged and tested you while you were here at UNCP, and the fact that you're about to leave with the sound of applause ringing in your ears says that you have passed the test, that you have met the challenge. And now what? More challenges, of course, exciting ones. And believe it or not, you are ready to meet those challenges. I'm not sure which is scarier, which is the scarier or more exciting event, entering college or graduating from college. Both are momentous events, life-changing events. Both are very big deals. You have learned all sorts of things both in and out of the classroom that have equipped you to function independently and confidently now that you are leaving UNCP. I suspect that you've learned that there's an awful lot more out there to be learned. There truly is. Learning is a lifelong joy and a lifelong job. And you have acquired while here the tools that will make continuing to learn easier than it would have been otherwise and we hope more pleasant. So you have a very exciting time ahead of you as you build upon what you have learned here at UNCP. As I said before, we are very proud of you and of what you have accomplished while you were here. We look forward to hear, hearing about what you will accomplish in the future. Today we celebrate your graduation and your hard work that led up to it. And today we celebrate your commencement, the commencement of your future. And we wish you a future filled with exciting challenges and much success and much happiness. Thank you.
Good morning, class of 2006. You excited? There you go. For the past four years, you have grown as a student and also as a well-rounded individual. You have learned how to schedule yourself, what to do in certain situations, and most importantly, how to wake up on time. You've encountered countless exams for which you pulled many all-nighters. You were assigned hundreds and hundreds of homework problems, and you endured those awful pop quizzes. You procrastinated those 20-some page papers that you revised over and over again, only to have your printer run out of ink in the last minute. You had to deal with those huge projects that were due for your class, even though your group members didn't do their work. And you finally understood the true meaning of the words college drama. Nonetheless, you had some good times, too. You have met new people that you never knew existed before. And some of those people are here with you, and they're going to be your long life friends. You celebrated birthdays of your friends as well as yours, and on those Thursday nights, you know what you did. One of the beauties of going to UNC Pembroke is the fact that it is one of the most diverse schools in the United States. If you can't tell by the length of my name, I am one of those foreign kids. I was born and raised in Serbia, which if you, some of you uh, know, it's not the most diverse country in the world. But I lived in Charlotte for a little while. But once I came to Pembroke, that was the first time when I realized the true meaning of the words culture shock. I saw students with different races, creeds, religions, and backgrounds sitting together and eating together. I said to myself, this is what a university should be like. A place where you, the diversity is acknowledged and when you will most likely learn something new about someone's religion or creed. I consider myself blessed to have two great parents that sacrificed everything they had and owned in a completely different country and decided to move out of the United States because they knew if they moved into the United States they could provide the education for their children. So as I look into the seats I can see that we have something to, in common. You have parents and family members that care about you and are supportive of you. These good people have been behind you all along, cheering, rooting, and pushing you to achieve what is best for you. They have helped you in any way they could, whether it was bringing your laundry back home or them cooking you that delicious home meal. They were there for you. So when you walk across the stage here today, I want you to know that although you are going to be incredibly happy to get the diploma, your parents will be bursting with joy because they know that their child has made something out of themselves. The pride they will experience here today will become memories that they will remember for the rest of their lives. And I want to take this opportunity to help me acknowledge those parents and those family members by a huge round of applause. A friend of mine told me two years ago before she graduated, she said, Marco, the only thing you should be afraid when you graduate is complacency. So I said, all right. So after I Googled the word complacency, uh, I found out that it means one's feeling of being so satisfied with their own abilities or accomplishments that they feel as if they shouldn't try any harder. Now, some of you will go on to graduate schools, some of you will find a job or a career, some will go into the military, and maybe some will have a family. However, I know that you graduates here today, in comparison to what you will achieve for the remainder of your life, this step here will be just a small milestone, however, a very important one. In your life, you will accomplish many great things. You have the desire and you have the knowledge. Once the drive is instilled within you, you will become unstoppable. And I would like to leave you with a quote of a great man who was my, who was my grandfather. He said to me, son, never forget who you are and where you come from. Be proud of it because that is something that will be a part of you for the rest of the life. And I hope you carry that with you. So on behalf of the Student Government Association, I want to say congratulations, class of 2006. You earned it. Chancellor Matters, President Meredith Broad, our commencement panel, Vice Chancellors, Board of Trustees, faculty and staff. I bring you welcome on behalf of our UNCP Alumni Association. I'm James Bass, Director of the Alumni Relations Office at UNC Pembroke, and I'm very proud to be here in front of you this morning. I'm proud because I'm a graduate of this university, and I'm very proud of this university and the accomplishments it's been able to afford me. Uh, I met my wife here. I met lots of friends here, uh, I've made a career here, and it's been a wonderful place for me. I hope you will leave here today taking those very same sentiments with you as you look to your friends and your professors. 
Graduates, congratulations. You've done the work, you've paid the dues, and now you're, you're about to reap the rewards of those hard years of work and sacrifice. You've come to the end of a journey, and you're about to embark on a new one. Will it be an easy journey? I cannot stand here today and tell you that it will. In fact, in some ways, it will be tougher. But I can say that you are well prepared to succeed because you have acquired the skills, the knowledge, and the ded dedication to go out and compete with the very best. As college graduates, you are entering the workforce with an advantage. As graduates, you will also become part of a family, a family that extends throughout our country and around the world. They are your fellow alumni and members of your alumni association. Along your journey, you will meet these people and you will be able to share the kinship of that new family as you become, that you've become part of here at UNCP. As I said, your journey will not end here. In fact, it will branch into many other directions as you become employers, employees, husbands, wives, moms, dads, teachers, students, and many other roles. No matter where your journey may take you, we hope that it will lead you back to UNCP, the place our family calls home. I'm very proud again to stand in front of you because there are so many of you who are my students, my friends, my classmates, members of my fraternity, uh, people that I worked with, and students that I've dealt with uh, for many years, and I'm very proud to see you here today. As members of the Alumni Association, you have a responsibility. Go out there and tell everyone how wonderful your university is and encourage others to attend. You also have a responsibility to give back, and I don't just mean financially. I mean in volunteering, giving back to the campus, taking part in alumni functions, coming back for homecoming, and, alumni uh, and most importantly, coming back to homecoming. And don't forget to stay in touch with us and visit the website and update your contact information. Graduates, congratulations and Godspeed. Thank you for their inspiring words. I now ask Dr. Thomas Leach, Dean of the College of Arts and Science, to introduce our candidate for the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. Good morning. It is my very great pleasure on this beautiful morning to present James Hubbard, Professor Emeritus, Department of Psychology and Counseling. Professor Hubbard was born in Talladega, Alabama on March 13, 1921, and grew up in Richmond, Virginia, working in banking, served his country as a medic in World War II. After the war, he attended Union Theological Seminary and upon graduation was ordained a Presbyterian minister. He also earned the BA, the Bachelor of Arts, and the Master of Arts in Psychology at the University of Richmond. Professor Hubbard's first teaching position was at Presbyterian Junior College in Maxton, North Carolina, which became St. Andrew's Presbyterian College in Laurenburg, North Carolina later. He joined the education faculty at UNC Pembroke in 1965 and was given the assignment of organizing the university's psychology department in 1966. For the next 20 years, Professor Hubbard taught in that department. During those years, he developed and taught a very popular course on the psychology of stress. Over time, healthful living evolved into a dominant theme in Professor Hubbard's formal and informal educational endeavors. During the next several years, he wrote several booklets, printing at his own expense and distributing them in schools and businesses in the community. These included stress control for teachers, positive parenting, and positive living. Professor Hubbard's commitment to the university did not end with his retirement in 1986. He created several endowed scholarships and a leave fund to enable faculty to pursue scholarship or educational travel. Many faculty have benefited from the opportunities afforded by Professor Hubbard's commitment and generosity. To paraphrase Ralph Waldo Emerson, those are a success who have lived well 
gained the respect of intelligent people, filled their niche, and accomplished their task, who never lacked appreciation of the Earth's beauty or failed to express it, who looked for the best in others and gave the best they had. Jim Hubbard is such a person, and it is my very great pleasure to present Professor Hubbard this morning to Chancellor Metters and the UNCP community for the conferring of the Honorary Doctorate in Humane Letters. Professor Hubbard. James F. Hubbard, noted lecturer, professor, and superb ambassador for the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. By virtue of the authority vested in the University of North Carolina by the state of North Carolina and the university entrusted to me, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters, together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, and cause you to be vested with this hood appropriate to that degree. Congratulations. Dr. Hubbard, would you like to come forward and say a few words? Better use the microphone, sir. I don't think they're serious. I wanted to express my appreciation where I spent my life. But my life was students and how much I enjoyed it. <clears throat> I feel very honored. And I hope the man upstairs is impressed because my next assignment is there. <laughs> now, I want to just say a few words to the graduates. You know you're going out into the real world. <laughs> you are going to experience Three things that I'm sure of. Disappointment, frustration, and many successes. I want you to understand your disappointments, to manage your frustrations, and to rejoice in your many successes. Thank you, Dr. Herbert. I now invite Dr. McClanahan, faculty senate chair, to come to the podium and introduce our distinguished commencement speaker. Almost seven years ago, during my first year here, Alan Metters was installed as chancellor of UNCP. And the then president of the UNC, UNC system Molly Corbett Broad came and spoke at that event. I very clearly remember thinking, what an impressive person she is. We are honored to have that very impressive person with us again today. Professor Broad served as president of the 16 campus at University of North Carolina from 1997 through 2005. She continues to serve as a member of the economics faculty at UNC Chapel Hill. Before coming to UNC, she was executive vice chancellor and chief operating officer of the 23 campus California State University for four years. That's the largest senior system of higher education in this country. Before that, she served as the top administrator for Arizona's university system. When I look at her resume, the word that leaps to mind is, wow, it's just incredible. During Professor Broad's tenure as president of UNC, 
The enrollment across the 16 campuses grew by nearly 37,000 students and now exceeds 196,000. That's like adding another UNC Chapel Hill plus another NCANT State University. Minority enrollment across UNC grew at more than double the rate of the overall student body. The university system's operational budget almost doubled from $1.4 billion to $2.2 billion. Due to Professor Broad's leadership, the University of North Carolina now ranks number three nationally among public university systems in the level of external support for research and other sponsored programs. Closer to home, UNC Pembroke is one of the seven campuses that has benefited greatly from her focused growth initiative. Due in large part to Molly Corbett Broad's leadership, the UNC system is thriving with impressive growth in student enrollment and consequent growth in faculty and administration, new academic degree programs at both the undergraduate and the graduate levels, increased funding for research, leadership in teacher education, the health professions, information technology, biotechnology, and on and on and on. But I know that we would all rather hear from her than about her. So please join me in very warmly welcoming Professor and President Emeritus of the University of North Carolina, Molly Corbett Broad. Class of 2006, you made it. Congratulations. <laughs> On an event that carries with it great symbolism, it is a special pleasure for me to join the dignitaries on the platform, the members of your faculty, student graduates, and members of the UNCP families. Our medieval academic robes <clears throat> and hoods and the rituals of commencement are very important symbols that reaffirm the significance of the university itself as one of the oldest institutions in the post-Renaissance period of modern history. Now, when these hoods were originally invented several centuries ago, they were intended to keep warm the balding heads of the members of the faculty who were teaching students in rather cold buildings without the benefits of modern heat. They obviously do not serve that purpose anymore, and today they are really much more ceremonial with our colors reflecting the university and the specific academic discipline of our degrees. These ceremonies remind us that we are linked in a very long chain of university education that stretches over centuries and connects one generation of students with the next. This symbolism has special meaning for UNC at Pembroke and our 15 sister campuses that comprise the University of North Carolina, the nation's oldest public university. You cannot find a single corporation in America that is as old as this university. Nowhere, I believe, in the entire world is there a public university that claims more pride over its history that is claimed by the citizens of North Carolina. Our state strongly held belief that education is a key to a better life reaches back more than two centuries when the citizen leaders of that time chartered a university within days of North Carolina's becoming a state. 
but our pride in the university is based upon more than age alone. It is deeply ingrained in what defines North Carolina, a bedrock belief in the transforming power of education. Indeed, if North Carolina's sons and daughters can claim any birthright, it is the opportunity to pursue an affordable higher education at one of the nation's very finest public university systems. Certainly UNC at Pembroke, now you can call it your alma mater, is a university on the rise. One increasingly recognized for the quality of its faculty and of its academic programs, as well as a growing commitment to the economic well-being of this region. Consider for a moment that UNC at Pembroke began life as the Croatan Normal School in 1887 with an appropriation from the General Assembly amounting to $500. The school, founded to train American Indian public school teachers, opened with 15 students, and instruction was at the elementary and secondary level. Like every campus in the University of North Carolina, UNC at Pembroke had a modest beginning, but was the region's best hope for a brighter and more prosperous future. In nearly 120 years since its founding, UNC at Pembroke has been transformed with curricula expanded far beyond that noble early focus. Enrollment has grown from those 15 students to the current 5,600 students with a richly diverse student body and a wide array of degree programs at both the baccalaureate and the master's levels. The expansion of college opportunity here at Pembroke just since 2000 to the turn of the new millennium has been nothing short of phenomenal, with student enrollment growing by 65%. So today, more than 400 degrees will be conferred, 55 of which will be at the master's level and with a marvelously healthy mix of science and art and the professions of nursing, social work, teaching, and business. At a time when enrollments in math and science continue to decline nationally, as we learned this week from the latest report from Washington, here at UNCP, the largest number of degrees being conferred will be in math and in science. Your campus has flourished while maintaining strong ties to its historic roots and its historic mission. The impressive growth in enrollment on this campus is a tribute to the leadership of Chancellor Metters. It is a source of enormous pride for the university and for me personally. In my inaugural address as the new president of the university some nine years ago, I placed great emphasis on expanding opportunity and affordable access to the University of North Carolina. At that time, North Carolina's college-going attendance trailed the national average. And many thought that we had set enrollment goals that were simply unachievable. Well, Chancellor Metters knew they were achievable and set out to demonstrate just how UNC at Pembroke could recruit and reach out to students who might otherwise not believe that a college education was possible. Well, we have shot right through that national average, and now North Carolina has a college attendance rate that is in the top handful of states in the nation and we are well on our way to the leadership position. By any measure of inclusion and academic success, this university's results, what is now your alma mater, are nothing short of stunning. And yet the job is not done, and it is never done when your goal is to build a strong economy and a nobler civilization. 
So as we make our way through this still new millennium and UNC and Pembroke second century, let us remember that the challenges and the opportunities that await us in the years ahead will require no less vision, no less foresight than has brought us to this important milestone today. Our common destiny will be defined by the way we honor the many cultures, religions, and traditions that now comprise North Carolina, by how we reshape the policies that govern our conduct, and how we embrace our common humanity while respecting diversity. It is UNC at Pembroke's faculty whose accomplishment we also celebrate today. Their role is central in creating this unbroken chain of education. It is their teaching and research pushing the frontiers of knowledge that create the fire in which new, each new link in this chain is forged. Their work has included helping you develop those 21st century skills that include inquiry critical and creative thinking, analytical as well as ethical reasoning, ability to communicate effectively orally and in writing, ability to work in teams, to understand globalization, to value diversity, and to develop intercultural knowledge, developing skills in the use of information technology. If the faculty and all of us in the university have met our objectives, you are now better equipped to continue the learning process. So it is to each of you in the class of 2006 we pay tribute to the accomplishment of your dream, one attained through hard work and perseverance and what I gather may be a few Thursday nights. <laughs> there are others here today who you already have heard are bursting with pride, and they are the ones who you must thank today in your own way for their support financially, but for all of the additional burdens that they took on so that you could write a paper or study for an exam. So as you complete your academic programs at UNC at Pembroke and enter the workforce, many of you, as has already been mentioned, will confront problems that are as great, if not greater, than those faced by prior generations of graduates. But you will do it in a world that is marked by unrelenting and accelerating change. This pace of change and the blurring of regional and national economies into a single world economy are dramatically changing the importance of your education and the need for you to keep learning. The message is the same whether I tell you about Lou Gerstner, the former CEO of IBM, who said to me, North Carolina confronts a challenge and you are in economic warfare. Or if I turn to Peter Drucker, the wise and canny seer, who asserted that the only comparative advantage we have is our people, their knowledge, know-how, and capacity for innovation. The forces of global change are transforming our state and nation, both urban and rural. The evolution and the integration of technology, knowledge, and economics is fast creating this single global market. As the internet, used by all of you I know, and other emerging technologies proliferate, they will continue to drive globalization forward. This intensified global connectedness will ensure that how we communicate, how we invest, and how we work will be increasingly global. In the digital world of the internet, Beijing, Bangalore, Boston, 
and boom are but a mouse click away from one another. The rest of the world is catching up with us. We have watched other countries with basically agricultural economies employing new strategies to enable them to leapfrog right over the industrial age into the knowledge age. I think of a nation like Ireland, uh, just about half the size of North Carolina. And in 1990, Ireland had very high structural unemployment. And before the turn of the century, less than 10 years, they had the fastest growing economy in the European Union. How did Ireland make such an amazing transformation in less than 10 years? They invested in education and in research. They enacted public policies that attracted research-intensive and technology-intensive industry. More than 50 years ago, North Carolina looked something like what Ireland might have looked like in 1990. And in fact, Franklin Roosevelt, when he was president of the United States, declared that due to poverty and joblessness, the nation's greatest problem was the South. And yet today, half of all the new jobs being created in our nation are being created in the South. We need to appreciate that central to the prosperity we have enjoyed over the last 50 years has been this massive investment that began with a GI Bill after World War II. The investment in science and technology and in research that translated the benefits from national security to health care to our economic competitiveness in the world. Experts have concluded that that investment accounted for half the growth and two-thirds of the productivity improvements in our country over the last 50 years but the rest of the world is catching up. The caliber of competition from other parts of the world, graduates of 2006, is a globe that awaits you. You must help this nation pick up the pace. The spirit of competitiveness, creativity, and innovation, I believe, are wired into the DNA of Americans and you must help us tap into that great competitive capacity. When the Russians launched Sputnik in the late 50s, this nation responded with compelling and passionate commitment to regain our leadership in aerospace. At that moment, we had no idea how to put a man on the moon, but we did it. We may need another Sputnik moment. We have permitted investment in research in our country to slip as a share of our gross domestic product, and we are now exceeded by a half a dozen countries, including places like Sweden, Japan, and even South Korea. Other developing countries are on the move, Brazil, Russia, India, China, called the BRICS, have added 3 billion people to our global trading system in the last 15 years. They are rapidly creating middle classes in each of those countries, in India, in China, in Brazil. And they are projected to exceed the economies of the G6, the European countries and the U.S before the middle of this century. This, my friends, is astonishing. China will soon be the largest producer of university graduates in the world. In fact, in 2004, China graduated 600,000 engineers, and India graduated 350,000. Consider that the United States in that year graduated 70,000 engineers. In other words, 
Chindia, the Chinese and Indian counterpart to the European Union, is graduating 14 times as many engineers as we are. While their enrollments in science and technology are accelerating, ours are declining. We're not even replacing the scientists and engineers among the retiring baby boomers. When I was a child, my mother would say at the dinner table, clean up your dinner plate. There are hundreds of thousands of Chinese children who are starving. Today at the dinner table, mothers are saying to their children, clean up your dinner plate and get busy on your homework. There are hundreds of thousands of Chinese children who want to get our jobs. Consider that for the cost of one chemist or one engineer in a U.S. company, they could hire five chemists in China or 11 engineers in India. So it is no surprise that we are outsourcing 1.5 million service jobs, a number <clears throat> that is projected to grow to 4 million by 2008. Yahoo acknowledges having 11,000 software engineers in India alone. These stories about outsourcing of jobs remind me of a story about Sherlock Holmes and Watson that was found recently in a discovered manuscript. The story was about Sherlock and Watson camping out along the Colorado River at the base of the Grand Canyon. Sherlock was awakened and called out to Watson, saying, look up into the night sky. What do you think? Watson said, when I look up into that night sky, I see the shadowed image of those great trees sharply contrasted against the canyon wall and the vast constellation of stars. I see the brilliance of the moon against the dark sky. I think about how fortunate I am to be in this wonderful place, and I marvel at the exquisite beauty. What do you think, Sherlock? Sherlock said, I think someone stole our tent. Well, I can imagine this story as a metaphor for North Carolina. Some of us see the beauty and the strength of our state. While many displaced workers in North Carolina today feel like someone stole their tent. We now live in a society in America that cannot prosper without exceptionally well-educated workers. Nonetheless, with 5% of the world's population, U.S. maintains economic and technological superiority in the entire world. So for all of these challenges and uncertainties that confront us now and that lie ahead, this remains for you as new graduates a time of great opportunity. Globalization is not a zero-sum game. This nation approaches this new global order very well positioned to sustain our leadership, both economically and socially. As you leave UNC at Pembroke and embark on new endeavors, you must be emboldened by this knowledge and by the 21st century skills you developed here. We're counting on you to draw on those capabilities the five I's, imagination, ingenuity, invention, impact, and insight to build a strong future for the generations that will come after you at UNC Pembroke. We're counting on you to draw upon that creativity, entrepreneurship, and innovation to transform North Carolina and the South and our nation just as your predecessors 50 years ago brought this nation to its current leadership position. 
graduates of the class of 2006, this is the world that awaits you. We salute your achievements and we do wish you Godspeed on life's new journey. Thank you. Thank you, President Emeritus Broad, for those insightful comments. We apologize for the unsolicited commercial by the United States Army. It's our Army. <laughs> yes, thank goodness it is our Army. <laughs> At this time, we now do what the graduates have long rated for. The, pre <laughs> the presentation of their well-owned diplomas. Provost Harrington, would you please present the graduates? Graduates from the College of Arts and Sciences, Bachelor of Arts degree. Introducing the candidates for the Department of Art. Charles Brandon Blanks. Michael Wayne Hatcher. Roger Jared Hatfield. Charity Nanette Locklear. Ivan Rodrigo Tapia. Keita Nicole Turner. Graduates from the Department of English, Theater and Languages. Joshua Kevin Cornwell. Sarah Renee Crandall. Kristen Marie Grimes Cum Laude. Angelica Dawn Lilly. Rose Anna Estelle McClintock. Daniela Newland Cum Laude. Margaret Fleming Stone. Candidates from the Department of History. 
Andrew Reed Davis. Melanie G. Davis. John M. Green. Melissa Gail Hanks. Cynthia Carmen Kanamura, cum laude. James E. Keith the third, cum laude. Thomas Jordan Martin, magna cum laude, University Honors College. Carolyn Thompson McDonald. Megan A. Phillips. Carrie Sue Pierce. Christy Lynn Randall. Graduates from the Department of Music. Sarah Marie Cohen. Brian Todd McMillan. Heather Scarborough. Lemuel Carrell Stanley. <laughs> Graduates from the Department of Philosophy and Religion. Eric Daniel Williamson. James Andrew Wilson. Craig Darnell Wilson II. Graduates from the Department of Political Science and Public Administration. Mary Jo Siri Galnitz. Adam Benford Hardin. Leticia Lynn Hardin. Nikki Nicole Locklear. Amy Marie Lowry. Jamie R. McCall, summa cum laude, University Honors College. Arthur Mellors. Brandon Lada Michael. Kristen Brooke Moore. Gregory Robert Self. Graduates from the Department of Sociology and Criminal Justice. Cedric Antonio Barton. Nadi Panka Bat. Kayla Ann Bramer. Catrice Aoife Brunson. Maya Kimberly Budaharjo. <laughs> Melissa Myers Owen Butler. Jessica D. 
Campbell. Jessica Lynn Carter. Nicholas S. Cowell. Iris Darlene Derrick. Anjanique Ward Dick. Ann Drummond. Cecilia Wright Ellerby. Hakeem Jamal Ellis. Stephen Blair Fountain. Deborah F. Freeman. Marie Nicole Gooch. Jennifer Rachel Graham. Rachel Elizabeth Harbert Cum Laude, University Honors College. Victoria Lynn Hester. Vanessa Hicks. Jamika C. Hunt. Stephanie Lynn Jacobs. Stephanie R. Johnson. Courtney J. Leggett. Make sure that anybody else knows. Christy Lynn Locklear. Christy Smith Locklear. Rudy T. Locklear. Jewel Antiqua McIntyre. Carolyn Williams McLean. John Meredith McNeil. Kelly Aaron Parker. Jessica Renee Pullman. Latoya Shante Purdy. Hope Ashley Robinson. Marcella and Shana Rouse. Melanie Renee Simmons. Shirley Jean Smith. Sheila Lejean Stoltz. Joshua David Thompson. Monique Shante Whitaker. 
Lukita Wilson. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree recipients in the Department of Biology. Kanisha L. Bird. Stephanie Amanda Brewington. Odell Jamal Brown. Fico. Jacob W. Davis, cum laude. Risa Miyagi. Akil Saranun Hegde. Joshua Brett Hughes. Mark Hunt, cum laude. Courtney Marie Kilgore, magna cum laude. Marquita Nicole Lilly. Desiree Locklear. Melissa Onate Locklear. Lee Ryan Lowry, summa cum laude. Pamela Lynn Lowry. Candace Marie Lowry. Amanda Jean Moss. Lenesto De Carlos Page. Cameron P. Richardson. Liana Marie Sawyer, magna cum laude. Eric Scott. Marcus Daniel Stanlin. Danelle Elise Stanback. Thomas Swansea. Samuel Franklin Swick. Venita Rochelle Williams. Joseph Bradley Wright. Graduates from the Department of Chemistry and Physics. Tara Marie Drake, magna cum laude. Eric Andrew Duncan, summa cum laude. Henry Justin Hall, cum laude. University Honors College. <coughs> Lisa Marie Hayden. Benium T. Cashin.
Crystal Danette Lenoza. Angela Diane Lee. Brandon N. Locklear. John J. Murray. Arian Myers. Jasmine Nicole Nixon. Stephanie Nicole Russell. Janet Suzanne Sanford. Maureen Jennifer Sykes. Christina Renee Sparks. Shannon Renenberg Stark, magna cum laude, American Chemical Society certified graduate. Timothy Robert Stebbins, Jr., summa cum laude. Danny Wayne Strickland, Jr. Hong Tran, magna cum laude, University Honors College. Jessica Oxendine Tyler. Heather Don Walters. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Music. James David Crow, Jr. Sarah Lynette Jennings. Candidates from the Department of Mass Communications. John Scott Ammons. Joseph Brandon Barber. Jessica April Bernier. Tamika Nicole Bobbitt. Raleigh D. Boone. Jacqueline Marie Bauer, magna cum laude. Kehlani Coakley. Daniel Henry. Sonia Serena Jackson, cum laude. Carolyn M. Jones. Krista Rose Lamb. Nicole Kristen McCorkle. Laura Michelle McLean. Kyle Ross Arozovic. Mark Maurice Schulman. Oh, 
Natasha Tajman. Candidates from the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. Jason N. Bradkey. Dwayne E. Hoyt III. Joyce A. Lewis, magna cum laude. Nikisha Monique Lewis. Matthew Chase Locklear. Benjamin Pearson Meisenheimer. Jimmy Maurice Peterson. Jefferson Lee Sullivan. Michael Thomas Zindros, magna cum laude. Candidates from the Department of Psychology and Counseling. Jacques Philippe Aru. Christina Ann Autry. Michelle Lee Combs. James Michael Drummond. Tammy L. Ellenberg. Chandra Jean Graham. Eric Hines. Jennifer Lynn Howell. Heather Jacobs. Jacqueline N. Kerr. Christy Dennis Lennon. <clears throat> Elizabeth Ashley Lewis. James Henry McDonald Jr. Emma Catherine McLaughlin, cum laude. Tasha Marie Mena. Kimberly Irene Morrison, cum laude. Kirsten Elizabeth Robb. Amy Tennille Sampson. Catherine Lee Stokes, magna cum laude. Julia Marie Tripp. Kelly Agnes Velez. Anthony M. Zimmerman, summa cum laude, University Honors College. Candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Virginia Faith Benton.
Janelle April Locklear. Crystal Lynn Moore. Lori Michelle Wiggins. Candidates for the degree Bachelor of Social Work. Shyla Cosetta Baldwin. Candace Nicole Clark. Frank Cummings. Megan Maria Elliott. Shinetta Shanae Graham. Susie Hawkins. Donna Hunt. Daniel Sylvester Jacobs. Lori A. Jernigan. Alicia Ronell Jones. Christina Maria Lowry. Cynthia A. Lowry. Roy Lee Mayhew. Walter Allen Morris. Anna Janet Carney Owens. Darius Parker. <laughs> Melvin Lewis Roach, Sr. Candidates from the School of Business, Bachelor of Science degree. <laughs> Tiffany Nicole Alford, cum laude. Mark Jason Babiak. Joshua David Bell, magna cum laude. Vaughn Arnice Braden. <laughs> Natasha Odetta Brown. Derek Shane Byram. Ronald S. Carter. Ron Christopher Emanuel, magna cum laude. Lisa Mary Gerasi. Robbie Daniel Giddens. Tracy Amber Green. Haley Nicole Grooms. Justin Parker Hadley. Lauren Kate Harden. Donnie Lynn Henderson. 
David Guillermo Ercia. Esther Maria Hill. Amy Hunt. Gregory Andrew Hunter. Tanya L. Johnson. Cheryl H. Joseph, magna cum laude. Nashad Mohammed Kermali. Shannon Lee Kirschneider. Jin Ping Lin, cum laude. Annette Locklear. Kelly Lane Lowry. Ashley Renee Lowry. John Michael Lunt. Tom Loopy, cum laude. Julia Mathay. Kelly Lynn McCary. Mark Christian Markham. Michelle A. MacArthur. Jennifer Lee McNeil. Christina Marie Midday. Amy Lynn Michu. Bryant Wilson Morgan. Lee Michael Neighberger, summa cum laude. Eric Sven Nordmark. Rebecca Ann Owen. Sarah Joyce Parker, cum laude. Paula Michelle Peterson. Rhonda Michelle Priest. David Michael Quinn. Wilson Amos Ramsey Jr. Aaron Brooke Rowley. Shruti O. Seth. Ike Singletary the second. Sean Sherard Sledge. Leslie Carol Taylor, cum laude. John Lee Thompson. Katie Hall Thorndike. Elizabeth Millard Thorsten. Kyle Alan Waldick. Melanie Lee Williamson. Adrian Brett Woods. Graduates from the School of Education, Bachelor of Science, Department of Education. Julianne Wright Arndt.
Patricia Barton. Laura Nicole Buck. Robin Watson Busco. Sandra Lee Butler. Stephanie Hope Chavis. Megan Amanda Cox. Shannon Bernice Daniels. Brandy Jennifer Donahoe. Adrian Marlene Evans, Cum Laude. Martha Norman Fuller, Cum Laude. Simone Crichelle Gonzalez, Cum Laude. Sarah Elizabeth Grooms. Jamie Locklear Hall, Cum Laude. April Rosanna Harper. Jason L. Harris, Summa Cum Laude. Joanetta Sadi Ingram. Ashley Danielle Locklear. Ina Kylina Lowry. Jennifer Ann Odom, Cum Laude. Melanie Lisa Oxendine. Dana Moore Petaway, Cum Laude. Michelle King Price, Magna Cum Laude. Nancy Lynn Rawlings. Ursula Yvette Sayadu. Erin Elizabeth Shockley. Jessica Hammond Spivey, Cum Laude. Ashley Stanley Strickland. Janet Maria Whitley. Ashley Christina Williams. Rachel Parrish Wren. Candidates from the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation. Thomas Warren Baker, Jr., Cum Laude. Lindsay Marie Bartoff, Summa Cum Laude, University Honors College. Ashley Brewer. David Matthew Bryan. Jonathan Lee Clark. John Nicholas Coffey. Benjamin Mark Cole. John Stephen Cooper, Jr. Joshua Shane Deese. Jason Edward Donahue. Brian Patrick Graham. Edward Alfred Henderson II. Morgan Brittany Hunt. 
John Jeroni Jacobs. Chad Everett Jones. Christina Sneed Lockamy. Roy Grayson Lockhart III. Arnold Brett Lowry. Tamara Marshburn. Henry McNeil Martin. Dwayne Royce Massey, Jr. Timothy Terrell McCormick. Scott William Metcalf. Mark Robert Nazati. Randall Barrett Otto. Aaron Scott Perkins. Jessica A. Puckett. Aaron Saltzman. Russell Randolph Scott. Jacqueline Judith Stark. Ellen Ashley Terry. Joshua Matthew Thomas. Aaron Drew Thompson. Yeah. Chancellor Metters, here presented are the candidates for the baccalaureate degree. Will the new baccalaureates please stand? By virtue of the authority vested in the University of North Carolina by the state of North Carolina and the university entrusted to me, I hereby confer upon you the degree for which the faculty has certified you, together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, effective on May 6, 2006, and offer you my warmest congratulations. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Please be seated. An additional garment, a hood, as well as a robe that's whiter at the sleeves than the baccalaureate gown, recognize graduates who have attained their master's degrees. Dr. Kathleen Hilton, Dean of the School of Graduate Studies, has the honor and privilege of hooding these students on stage. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in English Education. Laureen Burr Bessier. Masters of Music Education, Jean Marie Bell. <laughs> Regina Denise Bloomer.
candidates for the master's degree in physical education. Anna Baker. Toby N. Bicknell. Vernetta Yvonne Fogel. Jennifer Gustin. Rebecca L. Kenny. Deborah McMillan Locklear. Robert A. Priest. Charles A. Siebert, Jr. Jamie Walker. Candidates for the master's degree in school counseling. Eleanor E. Bauer. Jennifer Evans Downing. Catherine D. Grimm. Candidates for the master's degree in service agency counseling. Esther Jennifer Simmons. Candidates for the master's degree in science education. Wesley Glenn Cavanis III. Tracy Clark Roseberry. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Education, Elementary Education. Susan Russo Bailey. Laura Ann Candler. Leslie Thompson Easley. Cindy Lee Corson Hunt. Kathleen Wilderman. Candidates for the master's degree in middle grades education. Don R. Sarnan Salzling. Candidates for the master's degree in reading education. Anita Bernice Branch. Elizabeth Mosier Burroughs. Carol Yvonne Flynn. Autumn L. Jar Music.
Caroline Locklear O'Brien. Michelle Lynn Raymarch. Mike Charles Raymarch. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in teaching. Rodney Allen Jackson. Candidates for the Master of Business Administration. Liz Oxendine Cummings. Henry Thomas Jackson. David J. Saltline. Elizabeth Wilkes Wilkerson. Candidates for the master's degree in public administration. Amanda Lewis Crabtree. Michael Sean Kramer. Randy Faye Cutler. Jesse Matthew Dupark. Ashley M. Greer. Miranda Hagler. Danielle Vidette Geraldo. Mary Beth Locklear. Jennifer L. Watson. Shannon Williams. Candidates for the Master of School Administration. Ronald D. Bean. Thomas Lee Benson III. Stanley Douglas. Tylee A. Hansen. To Wanda Quick McNeil. Adrian Kelly Sinclair. Chancellor Metters, here presented are the candidates for the master's degree. While we're waiting for the, everyone to get back to their chairs, I uh, need to make a correction. I was informed that was a Marine helicopter, so I guess that was a Marine commercial and not an Army commercial. We want to be correct here.
Will the new masters please stand? By virtue of the authority vested in the University of North Carolina by the state of North Carolina and the university entrusted to me, I hereby confer upon you the degree for which the faculty has certified you, together with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, effective on May 6, 2006, and offer you my warmest congratulations. You may be seated. Today we celebrate the achievement of over 400 graduates of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. What a terrific milestone for each of you and your families. I'm honored to share this moment with you. Special congratulations to those who are the first in their families to receive a degree. You have changed the course of your family history, and your success today will inspire future generations to follow in your footsteps. You traveled in unfamiliar territory, and you have mastered the challenge. I would also like to recognize that many of you have chosen to serve our country. I'd like all of our graduates today who have served or plan to serve in our armed forces to stand and be recognized for their commitment to us in the United States. I would like to recognize two very special groups that have been mentioned several times this morning. First, the faculty and staff of the university for their commitment and caring. Please stand when we may give you a special thanks. <laughs> Finally, I would like to recognize the family, friends, and significant others of each graduate. These special people have supported and encouraged these graduates throughout their academic journey. Please stand when we may recognize you. And now, graduates, please allow me a few minutes to offer, you well, to offer you well wishes and some thoughts. U.S. Senator Orrin Hatch once said, there's a good reason why they call these ceremonies commencement exercises. Graduation is not an end, it is a beginning. Remember these words today as you celebrate your graduation and the start of a new chapter in your life. Now, I know what you're thinking. Here comes the advice. Fear not. I yet remember that Socrates gave advice and they poisoned him. But you must admit that I am bound by tradition to say a few words of encouragement. Frank Outlaw once said, first, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Second, watch your words, they become your actions. Third, watch your actions, they become your habits. Fourth, watch your habits, they become your character. And fifth and finally, watch your character it becomes your destiny. Brooks, At Brooks Atkinson once wrote, this nation was built by men who took risks, pioneers who were not afraid of the wilderness, businessmen who were not afraid of failure, scientists who were not afraid of truth, thinkers who were not afraid of progress, and dreamers who were not afraid of action. This is what has made America great, and I encourage you to carry out this tradition. And finally, paraphrasing Pulitzer Prize winner Ann Quinlan, it is so easy to waste our lives, our days, our hours, our minutes. It is so easy to take for granted the color of your kid's eyes, the way the melody in a symphony rises and falls and disappears and rises again. It is so easy to exist instead of to live. I learned to live many years ago. I learned to love the journey, not the destination. I learned that life is not a dress rehearsal and that today is the only guarantee we get. I learned to look at all the good in the world and try to give some of it back because I believe in it completely. And I've tried to do, I, and I have tried to do that in part by telling others what I have learned, by telling them this. Consider the lilies of the field, look at the fuzz on a baby's ear, read in the backyard with the sun in your face, learn to be happy and think of life as a terminal illness, because if you do, you will live it with joy and passion as it ought to be lived. Go achieve your destiny with your initiative, individuality, imagination, and independence that you have learned here at the University of North Carolina. 
I wish you Godspeed, fair winds, and flowing seas. Thank you. This concludes the ceremony. Grand Marshal Brown. <laughs>